Evan Ross faced a brutal wake-up call when his Miami Beach landlord told him rent was nearly doubling. I could either pay $6,500 a month and pay it every month, or if I paid the entire year up front, I could write one check for $72,000, which would be equivalent to $6,000 a month, and they would accept that. Now, unfortunately, Evan Ross's experience is not an anomaly. Many Americans all across this country are struggling to afford the rent spikes that they're being confronted with by their landlords, oftentimes corporate landlords. And while we've talked about all of these different factors that are playing a role in the spike in rental costs, whether it's private equity firms monopolizing the rental market, whether it's just greedy corporate landlords, you know, increasing rent to make up for some of the lost rent they may have experienced during the COVID pandemic. There are other issues that are not really known about. In fact, I didn't even know about it until ProPublica did this explosive report about how the tech industry is now getting involved using algorithms to jack up prices while simultaneously colluding with all these corporate landlords to, well, it looks like they're fixing the prices in some cases. So I'm gonna give you the details on what's going on. It's really important to know about this. It's also important to understand that the impact of this on the overall cost of rent across the country isn't fully known yet. But this is something that I personally think is going to become a bigger problem as the years go on. So for years, this company known as RealPage has sold a, an algorithmic software system that specifically helps corporate landlords jack up rent prices and basically do so in a way where they're able to make enough money from some of the people who are willing to pay the increased costs, while a huge portion of their units remain empty, vacant. It's, it's pretty incredible stuff. So they use an algorithm that decides what the cost of the rent should be for these corporate landlords. And then the corporate landlords with absolutely no empathy, no consideration, no negotiation with the tenants, We'll just jack up the prices and whoever stays, stays and pays that exorbitant amount for rent. And a lot of people can't afford it, so they leave. But the point here is they jack up the rent so much that those who are willing to pay the higher rent make up for the vacant units and then some. And it maximizes profits like you wouldn't believe while leaving many Americans without a home. So here's how it works, to arrive at at a recommended rent, Yieldstar, which is the name of the software that we're talking about here, deploys an algorithm, a set of mathematical rules to analyze a trove of data that RealPage gathers from clients. So understand what they're doing. They're gathering all this information from all these landlords and they're ensuring that the landlords basically all charge similar amounts for the rent. So it kind of leaves Americans without many options. So there are some potential antitrust issues here, which we'll get to in just a moment. But get a load of this ad for the software that RealPage had put out back in 2014. Think of these golf balls as your residence. Once the jar starts filling up and hits that magical market occupancy rate, a lot of companies start to relax thinking this performance is good enough, especially during the good times. What they lose sight of are the opportunities to continue to drive rent growth on the remainder of their community and significantly outperform the market. The vase may look full, but is it? Or is there room for more opportunities? By maximizing internal asset opportunities and capitalizing on turns in the market, Yieldstar has helped thousands of communities and hundreds of our partners continuously outperform over the last 10 years. Imagine the opportunities Yieldstar can provide for you. Our innovative approach and data availability deliver optimized pricing and asset performance based on calculation, not speculation. You've got no vacancy, everyone's paying their rent on time, you're satisfied, you're content. I mean, the the market is working the way it's supposed to work, right? You're basing the cost of rent on market forces. What this software essentially pushes landlords to do 
or encourages landlords to do, I think that's a better way of putting it, is to start charging rent that is over market value. Okay, so let me give you more details on how this works. As ProPublica writes, for tenants, the system upends the practice of negotiating with apartment building staff. RealPage discourages bargaining with renters and has even recommended that landlords in some cases accept a lower occupancy rate in order to raise rents and make more money. And this, in my mind, answers a huge question I've had for such a long time as we see these ivory towers built all around Los Angeles and other big cities. These major apartment complexes with luxury units that sit empty. And I always wonder, the developer, how is the developer or the landlord making money off of this? And there's a pretty good chance that they're relying on this algorithm, this software to jack up the rents to a point where even with all those vacancies, those who remain, those who are who agree to pay the rent, oftentimes because they have no choice and they just have to pour all their money into that rent, are again making up for the vacancies and still providing even more of a profit. It's insane. So apartment managers can reject the software suggestions, but as many as 90% are adopted, right? So more often than not, the corporate landlords are like, no, I'll implement this. Let me try my luck. Let's see how it how it plays out for me. There are certain parts of the country where the software is widely used already, and I think it's important to look at the numbers to see the impact that it has had. So, for instance, in one neighborhood in Seattle, ProPublica found 70% of apartments were overseen by just 10 property managers, and every single one of them used pricing software sold by RealPage. And the consequences to that are pretty dire. So let's talk a little bit about what you're likely to see if you have the misfortune of living in one of these buildings. So corporate landlords who use the software have seen their profits rise even during economic downturns. So think about it, there's an economic downturn like in the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic where landlords, small landlords in particular, were trying to make the units that they were trying to rent out a little more desirable, a little more affordable to maintain occupancy. Now, the nation's largest property management firm, Graystar, found that even in one downturn, its buildings using Yieldstar, which again, that's the software we're talking about here, outperformed their markets by 4.8%, a significant premium above competitors, RealPage said in materials on its website. By the way, since this was reported, they've taken down a lot of content from their website. Graystar uses RealPages software to price tens of thousands of apartments. It's also worth looking at some specific other specific cases to kind of get a sense of how much of an impact this has had. So it it really turns this whole notion of the free market on its head, right? The supply and demand idea is kind of thrown out the window when they game the system this way by having all these corporate landlords collude with one another on what they're charging for rent because that's the other part of the software. It's baked into the software. A proof of concept version of the software had performed well in tests at townhouses Camden Property Trust offered for rent in its home city of Houston. At the time, the street behind Camden's townhouses was shut down while a grocery store was being built. Leasing staff wanted to discount rent for the townhouses because of the obvious nuisance, said Kip Zacharias, who worked at Camden as a consultant. So that's usually what landlords will do, right? Who wants to rent or continue paying higher rent in a building where the street next to it is shut down and there's all this construction going on with the grocery store? Oftentimes, landlords would decide against raising rent and they would actually give some sort of discount to keep units in that building desirable to renters, but that is not what happened. Instead, Yieldstar suggested boosting rents. We were like, guys, just try it, Zacharias said. The units ended up renting for significantly more than staff had expected. That was kind of the eureka moment, Zacharias said. If you'd listened to your gut, you would have lowered your price. But again, that is not what they did.
The practice of lowering rent to fill a vacancy was a reflex for many in the apartment industry. Letting units sit empty could be costly and obviously nerve wracking for landlords, but not when they used this software. Such agents sometimes hesitated to push rents higher. Jeffrey Roper, principal scientist at RealPage, said that they were that said they were often peers of the people they were renting to. We said there's way too much, get a load of this, there's way too much empathy going on here. This is one of the reasons we wanted to get pricing offsite. So think about, it's like the drone strike version of the housing market. Okay, the whole thing with drone strikes is you press a button and you cause damage, you, you kill people. And that, you know, face to face combat where you're watching someone die before your very eyes, like that, that element is taking out, taken out of it completely. So it feels like a video game. When it comes to housing and the use of this software, it's kind of a similar idea. Because if you're negotiating with a tenant, who just can't afford higher rent, well, it humanizes the person, right? You're talking to an actual individual who's struggling and you might have empathy baked into that whole situation because again, it is a person to person negotiation process and humans, I mean, it doesn't seem like it these days, but fact of the matter is they do have some degree of empathy that might impact their decision on how much they should increase the rent price. The whole idea with the software is, no, no, you're just gonna have an algorithm <laughs> decide for you and it takes the empathy out of it. Because the real problem according to RealPage was that the previous method and the method that a lot of small landlords still use today just had a little too much empathy in it. Now remember, we're talking about people who need a roof over their heads, a roof over their family members heads to survive, just a basic, fundamental thing that people need to live and survive in the world. Again, a roof over their heads. But hey, according to RealPage, you gotta take the empathy out of it. You gotta maximize your profits. You really gotta get a, a, a great return on your investment. It's insane. Now, uh, such agents sometimes, as I said, had hesitated to, to do this. Now, some of the tenants did move out when Camden's properties uh, increased their rents. But this is the most important part. Camden Property Trust's turnover rate increased about 15 percentage points in 2006 after it implemented Yieldstar. Rick Campo, the company's CEO, told a trade publication a few years later. But that wasn't a problem for the firm. Despite having to replace more renters, its revenue grew by 7.4%. So again, what Campo learned from this experiment would actually end up being pretty devastating for Americans looking for affordable housing, looking for affordable rent. The net effect, he said, of driving revenue and pushing people out was $10 million in income. I think that shows keeping the heads in the beds above all else is not always the best strategy. They say it out loud, guys, they say it out loud. And you have to rely on independent media sources, real journalists like those who work over at ProPublica to shine a light on what's really going on. This story isn't gonna be on CNN, it's just not. It's not gonna be on MSNBC, certainly not gonna be on Fox News. It's not gonna be on network news. This is the stuff that matters. It has an impact on your day to day life. And it's just there in plain sight. You have these corporate CEOs straight out saying, you know, keeping people housed, not profitable. Sometimes we don't wanna do that. Sometimes we wanna watch people suffer if that means we're gonna see a massive return on investment. If we're gonna see a huge increase in our profits. That is what he's saying there. Now, RealPage might be breaking the law. And this is where the antitrust issues come into play because antitrust enforcers might find that the use of private data on what competitors charge in rent is illegal and could even amount to illegal collusion between landlords, right? Because you're not supposed to collude as a landlord and be like, yo, what are you charging for rent? Okay, then if you're charging that, then I won't charge anything less, right? It creates a rental market that is not competitive, which is why this could potentially be an antitrust issue. 
This also stifles competition clearly and artificially inflates rent prices. Even if there's an economic downturn where conventional wisdom would have you believe that landlords should be decreasing the cost of rent. The story also gets even more gross once you learn who's behind the software. One of the chief architects behind this software. It's actually a business executive by the name of Jeffrey Roper. We mentioned him a little earlier in this story. And Jeffrey Roper had gotten into some trouble back in the day when it came to the airline industry. So let's go to that graphic. Jeffrey Roper was Alaska Airlines' director of revenue management when it and other major airlines began developing price setting software in the 1980s. Competing airlines began using common software to share planned routes and prices with each other before they became public. The technology helped head off price wars that would have lowered ticket prices. But back in the day, I mean, this is in the 1980s and early 1990s, the Justice Department was a little better. And so they got involved, they investigated this. The Department of Justice said the arrangement may have artificially inflated airfares, estimating the cost to consumers at more than a billion dollars between 1988 and 1992. Now, the government, because of their investigation and because they were somewhat effective back in the day, decided to get involved. And luckily, there were settlements and also consent decrees for price fixing. And eight airlines were involved with this price fixing scam. And guess what? Alaska Airlines happened to be one of them. Now, that same guy, Jeffrey Roper, who was Alaska Airlines' director of revenue management, is the chief architect of this software that's being used by corporate landlords to artificially inflate and jack up rent prices across the country. In places like Seattle, for instance. And as we know, rent is insanely high in Seattle. Now, again, I wanna repeat that despite the pernicious nature of this software, it's really difficult at this stage to understand how much of an impact it's had on the overall rental market. There is a housing crisis. There is an issue with the lack of construction. There's a tight market for home buyers that's been exacerbated by the housing shortage. And so you have to take those factors into account. I think those are incredibly important factors. But with that said, the idea of allowing algorithms to game the system so corporate landlords can price gouge renters and artificially increase rent prices is not only gross, it should be considered criminal. The Justice Department should be investigating this. And it is absolutely sick to see how something as important as housing can continue to be this profitable market, an asset, you know, something that investors use for personal gain, knowing full well how incredibly important housing is for everyone to survive.